Yo, what's up, Warren? Looks like you got a story to tell. Can you tell me about it? Let's start from the beginning. Are you sure you want to start from the beginning? I mean, I guess it depends on how far you want to go back. But I think for me, it really started around maybe the end of elementary school. So what is that, like fifth grade to middle school, where I just had like an infatuation with technology and video games and science fiction. And, and that was kind of my thing growing up. I really loved playing video games and just kind of being on the forefront of technology, even if, you know, we couldn't always afford the latest and greatest things, I was always aware of them. And I started to really gravitate towards this sort of like IT tech person in my family. I mean, I would help people when they're I guess it was their, their landlines weren't working and things like that. And then all the way to computers, uh, helping with printers and stuff like that. So the family kind of knew me as the tech person, so to speak. I mean, I was, I was still pretty young at that time, but I could always help out with different things. And I would always wanted to learn what was going on with those uh, specific technology areas. And that kind of morphed into when I was going to school, taking more classes related to IT and programming. So even in middle school, like I went after the, the computer classes. And then that gradually led me to the robotics club in high school, where I started doing a little bit more heavy programming. And that was super fun, right? You can write your code and actually see what happens in the physical world. So you move this controller and this piece of code relates to XYZ motion of the robot and it actually moves in the real world, which was super awesome. So from there, I went to college for information technology, you know, right on the same path. So I've always kind of had, you know, this goal of being like some sort of IT or programming person. And I went to school at Florida International University for information technology so that I could uh, study even harder and get to understand how some of these things work under the hood. So I finished that degree and it was a really great experience just kind of learning how to learn in IT. But I got a lot of exposure to different areas, programming I really started to take a liking to and that's, you know, kind of led me into this path of Salesforce. I'm pretty jealous of your earlier exposure of coding. One of the things I wish I had was that earlier exposure when I was younger. But quick question, one of the things that you said that we share similarities on is that we both do Salesforce development. What sparked your interest into Salesforce and why you still do it to this day? Yeah, these are great questions. I mean, I didn't really know anything about Salesforce before jumping into it, right? So like many people, uh, they just kind of fell into Salesforce and it ended up being a career path that they could see themselves doing over a long period of time. So for me, I actually took an internship in college where I had the opportunity to get exposed to Salesforce and I didn't know anything about it. I applied for the internship and I think it was like data analysis or some sort of like configuration job description kind of thing. And um, it just so happened to be in Salesforce. So that's where I kind of learned the basics and learned the ropes was at this internships and huge shout outs to, you know, those folks that kind of took me in and helped me understand what Salesforce was and pretty much took a chance on me to get to learn Salesforce itself. But from that internship, I kind of moved more down the development route. So I had opportunities to learn administration and um, but, you know, being in school and going through coding and stuff like that, I definitely had that sort of mindset to where um, once we reach blockers on the Salesforce platform through administration or configuration, I said, OK, let's move. Uh, let's try to see if this can get done in development. And that's where I kind of moved on that development path in Salesforce. And I just kind of stuck with it ever since. So I bounced around in a few different roles after that internship. So all of them development roles, but at different companies. And then finally landed on consulting for a good while. That's something that really tested my skills and made sure that I was staying sharp and up to date with all of the different Salesforce technologies and things like that. So for those that are looking to like learn pretty rapidly, and always be challenged and things that they're doing, I would definitely recommend 
um, doing consulting and going that route. But there's nothing wrong with, you know, starting out very similar to I did in house, kind of getting your feet under you and then moving into something that can be a little bit more fast paced or challenge you a little bit more than being in house. But there are different types of rewarding uh, activities that go along with that. But yeah, for me, I just kind of fell into Salesforce like many of the rest of the community out here and stuck with it. I think the main one's because of pay, right? Like if the pay wasn't that good, then, then I may have moved on to something else. But the pay is great and you get to work with a really fast paced environment, really great people. And the platform is ever changing. So you get a lot of really great exposure and experience of different technologies, different areas, and it's super fun and interesting to work on the platform. And that's kind of why I stick with it even to this day. Yo, you serious we're not twins? Like literally since I started off in Salesforce, that's all I've been doing is consulting work. But I do want to know, since you started off doing configurative work in Salesforce, what was your struggles when you needed to do some custom code when the configuration declarative stuff wasn't going to fit the needs of the business and you had to use some custom stuff such as Apex, Aura, and Lightning Components? and so on. It's kind of funny that you mentioned Aura because back when I first started, Aura wasn't really a thing. Like it was all Visual Force pages and Aura was just getting figured out and the framework was just getting released, at least to the general public. And I was all on Classic, right? Like Lightning didn't even, wasn't really a thing when I first got started. So one of the big struggles, at least being in the industry for like eight, nine years now is that there wasn't as many resources as there is today in knowing like best practices on development, things that you should do, like trigger frameworks were just getting figured out and fleshed out. So all of those things were very new and very interesting to me as a developer just coming out of school because it was a lot of discovering things that I've only really heard of or read about. And it really allowed me to kind of flesh out and learn more in my development career. But that was really hard because at the time working at the trucking company, I was the only developer there, right? I was brought in as an intern. I learned from an admin and I learned administration pretty well. But once we hit those roadblocks, there was nobody to really turn to in my department or in the company to say like, what should I do for these Salesforce development items? So there was a lot of discovery, a lot of uh, mistakes. And I've actually, you know, becoming a consultant, I actually was able to work with my my old company after I had gained a few years of experience and I look back at the code and I'm just like, what, what was I thinking, right? Like the experience that I gained over the years, you know, looking back at the code and what I did, I could really see like ways of improving it, way, the ways that I introduced errors and things like that. I just didn't know at the time what I needed to do and the correct way of doing certain things. So that was a really big learning lesson. And the way I really overcame it was one by branching out and finding mentors and resources out there. So Stack Overflow was still a thing and I was pretty active on you know forums and anything that I can get my hands on to really be a part of the community. I went to like user group events just to kind of link up with people that knew more than me and try to find those people that can help teach me a little bit more. And then the ecosystem grew and the documentation grew. So I started learning a lot more over the years and it really just became like an experience thing. So. I went to different companies. I learned different things. I learned from more experienced people. And that really helped me get past that rut of being a solo developer and not knowing some of the best practices. It just kind of came with experience and just absorbing as much information as I can, being willing to say that I don't know something and looking for some help and being open and honest on my abilities and the things that I knew. So I was very transparent on, you know, not knowing a lot of things. And that's why uh, I reached out to a lot of different people for help and for guidance. And I think that's some humility is good to have in development because you're being vulnerable on your things that you don't know and it can really help open doors for you and help you understand the things that you know are a bit confusing in the development world and that's kind of why like 
share my my insights now too on videos and stuff like this because when I was first starting out there wasn't that much Salesforce like user-led content and now um, you know the space is exploding right we're, we're even having this talk about it and that's why I share my insights it's to hopefully help somebody who is struggling on a specific problem or needs help whatever they're working on maybe even just career guidance this is why I try to give back because the community was so great to me when I first started and you know I'm just I guess that kind of person that I I, I love hearing myself talk, I guess, but I like to share what I've learned to really solidify the understanding of what I've been doing. Seem like you had a lot of growth in your struggles, Warren, and you really give meaning to the phrase "nothing venture, nothing gain." I'm pretty sure anyone listening to your story will gain a lot of value from it. Which brings me to the question: What are you doing now, and what are you doing to help others in the future? So, I mean, that's basically it. People know me now as Walters Nine Five Four. It's nothing special, right? I still work at any X Y Z company right now. I'm working in an ISV, but I did a lot of consulting. I um, mean, I think. The main takeaway is just for people to realize, like, you know, all these things aren't rocket science, especially with development. It takes a lot of perseverance and practice. I mean, practice is one of the biggest ones. That's what I've started preaching to a lot of my students and anybody that wants to get into development is if you want to learn this stuff, just try to code every day. Like I didn't wake up overnight and I knew all this coding stuff or I'm not some sort of super genius. It's really that I found it interesting and I kind of stuck with it. And that has taken me through all of these different companies that I've worked at and all of the different apps that I've created and things that I'm interested in, I try to apply a lot of the programming principles, so like problem solving and stuff like that to everything and anything that I'm doing. Thanks so much for giving me a ring, Ronald. I really appreciate it. And you giving me a platform to kind of share my story, share my experiences, I think is going to help a lot of people kind of get inspired to become developers. So if you're looking to become a dev, I think the biggest thing right now is just try to code every day or learn about code every day. There's so many free resources out there. You can ping me, you can ping Ronald on it. And I'm happy to share and help from what I have learned over the years. And of course, I got to do my sign off. So thank you all so much. And remember, I believe in you. Mm -hmm.